It's no secret that agriculture's future is worrisome and in desperate need of change. Overall, the population is increasing at a rate of roughly 1% each year, with certain countries rising even faster. As time goes on, feeding this expanding population will undoubtedly become a difficulty. To prevent harming the world and causing greater issues for future generations, we must find better ways to produce food. Fortunately, modern agricultural technology such as vertical farming provides an ideal method to address these issues and produce the food that future generations will require. In today's video, we're going to delve into everything you need to know about vertical farming and how it works. But before we get into the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel with notifications turned on so you don't miss out on any of the new videos we post. What is vertical farming? The method of growing food on vertically inclined surfaces is known as vertical farming. Instead of growing vegetables and other things on a single level, such such as in a field or in a greenhouse, this approach grows them in vertically stacked layers, which are typically integrated into other structures like skyscrapers, shipping containers, or converted warehouses. This current concept incorporates indoor farming techniques and controlled environment agriculture CEA technology. Indoor food and pharmaceutical production is possible thanks to artificial temperature, light, humidity, and gas management. Vertical farming is similar to greenhouses in that it uses metal reflectors and artificial lighting to supplement natural light. Vertical farming's main purpose is to maximize crop output in a small space. How does it work? Awareness of how vertical farming works requires an understanding of four key areas. Physical arrangement, lighting, growing medium, and sustainability features are all factors to consider. To begin with, vertical farming's primary purpose is to produce more food per square meter. Crops are grown in stacked layers in a tower-like structure to achieve this purpose. Secondly, to keep the ideal light level in the room, a perfect combination of natural and artificial lighting is used. Lighting efficiency is improved using technology such as revolving beds. Finally, growing mediums such as aeroponic, aquaponic, and hydroponic are employed instead of soil. In vertical farming, peat moss, coconut husks, and other non-soil mediums are commonly used. Finally, to counteract the energy cost of farming, the vertical farming system employs a variety of sustainability elements. Vertical farming, in fact, consumes 95% less water. What are the benefits of vertical farming? It utilizes less water and space. Farmers may use 98% less water and 99% less land with vertical agricultural practices. They can create agricultural Cultural yields of 240 times those of regular farms by rolling or perpetual harvesting year-round, and all of our food is powered by the sun rather than LED lights. So these crops aren't dependent on fossil fuels or other less-than-ideal energy sources. Around 80% of the world's population will be living in cities by 2050, according to estimates. Because of this population pattern, there will be a greater need for food in locations where land is scarce. Vertical farming in these huge cities provides a solution to meet the rising demand for food without having to import it. Efficiency the arable land needs of traditional farming are just too big and too intrusive to be viable for future generations. In 2050, compared to 1970, arable land per person is predicted to shrink by around 66% due to high population increase. Vertical farming can provide more than 10 times the crop output per acre than traditional methods in some circumstances. Indoor farming, unlike traditional farming in non-tropical locations, can grow crops all year. Depending on the crop, all-season farming increases the productivity of the cultivated surface by a factor of 4 to 6. When when it comes to crops like strawberries, the factor might be as high as 30. Because of its use of isolated crop sections, vertical farming also allows for the production of a wider range of harvestable crops. Vertical farms, unlike traditional farms where only one type of crop is harvested per season, allows a variety of crops to be produced and harvested at the same time due to their distinct land plots. In comparison to traditional agricultural methods, vertical farm produce only travels a short distance to reach stores, according to the USDA. According to the United States Department of Agriculture, the global population population will approach 9 billion by 2050, with the majority of people living in urban or city regions. The USDA predicts that vertical farming will be the answer to a potential food scarcity as the world's population grows. This farming approach is environmentally friendly because it reduces emissions and the amount of water required. This sort of urban farming would reduce distribution by allowing for near-instant farm-to-store transfer. Increased and year-round crop production We can produce more crops with the same amount of growing space by using vertical farming. In fact, one acre of indoor space can provide the same amount of output as four to six acres of outdoor space. A 30-story skyscraper with a base area of five acres could possibly produce the equivalent of 2,400 acres of conventional horizontal farming, according to an independent calculation. Year-round crop production is also conceivable in a regulated indoor environment managed entirely by vertical farming technologies. Environmental conservation. Due to vertical farming's enhanced production, up to 20 units of outside farmland for every unit of vertical farming could be returned to its original state. Vertical farming would save a lot of natural resources by reducing the quantity of acreage needed. It's possible to avoid deforestation and desertification induced by agricultural encroachment on natural biomes. Producing food indoors decreases
increases or eliminates the use of farm machinery for plowing, planting, and harvesting, conserving the soil, and lowering emissions. Because traditional farming necessitates such a huge area of arable land, it's frequently invasive to natural flora and species. According to one study, wood mouse populations declined from 25 per hectare to 5 per hectare after harvest, implying that traditional farming kills 10 animals per hectare each year. Vertical farming, on the other hand, would have a negligible impact on animals due to its small footprint. Preparation for the future Around 68% of the world's population is predicted to live in cities by 2050, and the expanding population will boost food demand. Vertical farming might potentially play an important role in preparing for such a scenario. Limitations of vertical farming No established economics The economic viability of this new agricultural strategy is still unknown. However, as the sector evolves and technology improves, the financial picture is shifting. Bowery, an indoor farming firm based in New Jersey, reported in December 2018 that it had raised $90 million in new capital. Plenty, a vertical grower on the West Coast, received a $200 million investment from SoftBank in 2017. Energy use During the growth season, the sun shines at an extreme angle on a vertical surface, providing far less light to crops than when they're grown on level land. As a result, additional lighting would be required. Vertical Vertical farming's electricity requirements, according to Bruce Bugby, would make it uncompetitive with traditional farms that rely solely on natural light. George Monbiot, an environmental writer, calculated that providing enough supplemental light to grow the grain for a single loaf would cost around $15. Even though crops growing in a glass skyscraper would get some natural sunshine during the day, it won't be enough, according to an article in The Economist, and the expense of cultivating crops in a glass skyscraper will be too high. Furthermore, researchers found that if only solar panels were used to meet a vertical farm's energy consumption, the area of solar panels required would have to be a factor of 20 times greater than the arable area on a multi-level indoor farm, which will be difficult to achieve with larger vertical farms. In Arizona, a hydroponic lettuce farm would require 15,000 kilojoules for each kilogram of lettuce produced. In comparison, a traditional outdoor lettuce farm in Arizona uses only 1,100 kilojoules of energy per kilogram of lettuce grown. Labor costs Vertical farming has significant energy costs, but labor expenses can be much higher because of their concentration in metropolitan areas where wages are higher and more specialized labor is required. Vertical farms, on the other hand, may require less personnel as a result of automation. In vertical farms, manual pollination may become one of the more labor-intensive operations. Pollution A CO2 source is required for a vertical farm, which is most likely to come from combustion if it's callicated with electric utility plants. However, CO2 that would otherwise be ejected can be absorbed. Greenhouses frequently boost carbon dioxide level to three to four times those found in the atmosphere. This rise in CO2 causes photosynthesis to increase at variable rates, averaging 50%, resulting in larger yields, faster plant maturation, smaller pores, and increased water stress resistance, both too much and too little. Hardier adult plants might be transplanted to regular greenhouses, freeing up space and boosting cost flexibility. Too much dependence on technology. The advancement of new technology can always improve efficiency and reduce expenses. However, the the entire vertical farming system is very reliant on numerous technologies for lighting, temperature control, and humidity management. For a vertical farm, losing power for even a single day may be highly costly. Many people believe that today's technologies aren't ready for widespread adoption. And there you have it. Everything you need to know about vertical farming and how it works, along with the benefits and limitations it poses. We'd love to hear your thoughts on vertical farming down in the comments below. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to like and subscribe so you never miss any of our new and upcoming content. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.